So now I want to explain this article, Language to Logical Form with Neural Attention, uh, from University of Edinburgh. But before that, I need to talk about something elementary. So our data could be a SQL database, knowledge graph, no SQL database, or any other forms. And there are some great articles to think about. And uh, for example, language to logical form that I want to explain. So Lambda calculus is really important. And there, these are amazing scholars. So Lisp uses S expression. I like Lisp language very much. And you have, and they have used, I mean, the company Grammarly, if you know the company Grammarly, that has lots of advertisement in, in YouTube, they use Lisp. It's interesting. It, they use Lisp uh, for their backend and in order for, for because it's, it's just one of the application of Lisp. It has millions of applications still in 2022. Uh, compiler design, anything you imagine, Lisp is, is interesting. Some people say it's the language of artificial intelligence, but it could be used for any other uh, application. So Lisp is an acronym for Lisp processing. And some people say joke that it has lots of irritating single parentheses, but it's useful. And primary data structure are uh, so, so, so they use a symbolic expression like this, like this, that uh, this is the operator, plus is an operator, operator. So, and the rest of that is operand, operand. So I always think about like this. We have a parent, we have some child. We have children, two and three. So two and three, they are, these are operands of this plus operator. So it gives an output. So think about it as a black box. So it's a black box. We don't know what it is. It gives to input two and three and gives output. So another example is this. So it uh, three and four and then uh, plus two. So the answer of this goes with, so you can always think about a, a, a tree. And Lisp is based on, is not based on uh, Lambda calculus, but it uses, it's, it's uh, I mean, uh, John, John McCarry borrowed the Lambda notation from Alonzo Church, it's a fact. He also understood it better than he wants you to believe. And so in 1941, we have church. We have this Lambda calculus. And in 1960, uh, John McCarthy uses that idea in his article, Recursive Functions of Symbolic Expressions. And so you see the relationship. And he is an amazing scholar in computer science. And also Alonzo Church. The, the work of Alonzo Church is like Alan Turing. That's why I like it. And first or logic, an example could be a restaurant near Carnegie Mellon University serves Indian food. So think about it. This is an operator. These are operand. For example, X and uh, Carnegie Mellon University are inputs to the operator near. X is near or that. So this one is Boolean expression. These are Boolean expression and you can use and expression. So everything could be things like that. But it's fair short of logic. But lambda calculus can be seen as a variant of high order logic. So this is an example of uh, lambda reduction because you always you can always ignore and create a simpler simpler language, and semantic parsing. For example, you tell to the robot that go to the pick, uh, go to the kitchen. You sh it should understand. So so this one is uh, uh, is language understanding and uh, meaning representation and then executor. So the lambda calculus is really important. 
So we have example of typed lambda calculus and example of typed lambda calculus. So and, and context-free grammar is different from combinatory ca category grammar. And I want to skip this. Uh, so a modern approach is in 2016 article from language to logical form with neural attention. Traditional approaches rely on high quality lexicons, manually built temples in linguistic features, which are either domain or representation specific. We aim to use a simple yet effective method to bridge the gap between natural language and logical form with minimal domain knowledge. So it's very solid because it doesn't use anything. It just uses neural network and attentions. Uh, uh, because there are many paradigms, you know, for semantic parsing. Let's say um, transition-based, graph-based, Graph base could be many different variants. Uh, just the solid version that we use attention and copying mechanism. We just want to parse uh, the the output to create that uh, um, representation. So and they, we can also combine these paradigms as well. But this approach is is the third one. We just use neural network. We just use encoder, decoder, and those sequence-to-sequence -sequence models that we almost do for everything. So our, our method consists of encoder and decoder, like this, sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. But sequence-to-sequence -sequence model has a potential drawback in that it ignores the hierarchical structure of the logical forms. As a result, it needs to memorize various pieces of auxiliary information, such as bracket pairs, to generate well-formed outputs. So this is the idea to, to tackle this problem, let's say. Sequence to tree model. Although this, this, this approach is really beautiful, we, I haven't seen that in any other uh, article, but it is not scalable because imagine if you say, for example, you come here next. I mean, you, instead of next, you say non-terminals. Then you so each of them could be a could go to a different uh, set of uh, encoders, and each one again and again. So the number of encoders that you are using grows. The number of no, uh, neurons, let's say, that you're uh, putting here is, but you can you can simplify. You can do it in a, in different ways. But uh, but they are very genius that created this beautiful article, uh, and uh, I will show you in in the next lectures that there are easier and maybe more beautiful approaches, more scalable approaches than this. And so it's generate logical forms in a top down manner. Oh, by the way, in, in dependency parsing, constituency parsing, in, in semantic parsing, in any, any of these parsing, syntactic parsing, all of these, we, we either use bottom-up parsing or top-down. So this is a top-down approach. Most of them are top-down. But I've seen some, some people in China, in Hong Kong University in China, that they use bottom-up. So it's very interesting. Sequence to tree model, as I said, it has some, for example, next, this one means non-terminals. It means that you're, you should go and you, you go to another set of, uh, so it, it is respecting the tree structure. It is respecting somehow the graph nature of the problem. And sequence to tree model, so we have parent feeding connection. And we just use the standard attention mechanism. Standard attention mechanism is obvious. Everything is obvious. And then we do model training standard as well. So we're just maximizing the likelihood. And inference is also is very normal standard inference time. So this is the sequence to tree. And this is amazing scholar. 
John McCarthy, as I said, 